And thanks for everyone hanging out to the caboose. Um, I'm going to give you a penguin perspective from the Palmer LTR and changing climate. Some uh, news, we have three new co-PIs, Dr. Carlos Moffitt, Dr. Megan Semino, and Dr. Ben Van Moy. So site news, um, the pandemic obviously was a big one. We were able to deploy four scientists last year, um, which was an act of Congress, um, but we were able to maintain the Palmer time series. And our team is uh, gonna join the ship after almost a 20 day quarantine tomorrow. Unfortunately, all supply lines through Chile are messed up. So they're gonna sit on the ship for another seven days waiting for cargo. Um, in terms of other exciting news, uh, we've got a more formal new partnership with NOAA, which occupies a time series up to the north of us. And we're sharing robots, moorings, and data streams and formalizing our relationship with uh, two other international sites. All these sites have up to 20, 30 years of data. And the exciting thing is it spans the full climate gradient from a northern area that is transitioning into a subpolar marine system to a true polar system in the south. And Palmer is right in the middle. Uh, we're going to talk about some extreme events, but generally what we're seeing in our system is sort of a press um, where warming, especially in wintertime, is impacting the sea ice. Associated with that, we've seen a shallowing of mixed layer depths, with that an increase in chlorophyll across the grid, and then the ocean breathes in the CO2 on a seasonal thing. One thing to notice is the spikiness in those trends, and a lot of that's driven by climate cycles, El Nino, La Nina, weakening of the southern annular mode. So we've conducted a spectral density analysis, um, and you can see sort of close correlations in terms of frequency between primary production, uh, the Antarctic krill, and Adelie breeding pair change. Uh, the one thing to notice for the Adelie is there's that one high frequency change, and that's gonna be really important. Uh, if you actually then sort of dephase it, the krill response shows up two years later um, from the primary production pulse and then the Adele, so on. You find that there's a really nice tightly coupled system. Um, again, that's driven by sort of to what degree the ENSO and Southern annular mode cycles are in phase or not in phase. And what was exciting is in 2008, we actually had a natural experiment with significant sea ice recovery. Um, over the long term, we've seen chlorophyll increasing, krill increasing, but unfortunately, the Adelis continue to show a decline. Um, it actually stabilized a bit um, as the sea ice returns. So we've done a lot of focus on essentially what's driving this and looking for the first time at some of the landscape effects. And first thing is you warm the whole system, you get a moister atmosphere, you get more snow, more rain, and snow and the amount of it has a big impact on the clutch dates. Um, essentially, if there's a lot of snow, they're laying their eggs later. And that's a big deal because the parents after the chicks hatch have to essentially get 3.1 kilograms ideally of fat onto the chick for it to survive. And it seems that that's highly variable, whether that happens year to year. Um, many years, there's a real big mass mortality. Um, and the big drivers we see for it um, are the snow clutch dates, but also the thermal regulatory cost for the chicks that are getting wet. So you see a healthy chick on top there um, in the down and you see a poor little runty guy down at the bottom. Um, and so these weather effects seem to be pretty dominant. And, and there's also variability. So take home is um, during the large decline in the Adelis, it was coincident where we had very frequent often uh, heavy storms with a very high precipitation, and this is rain and snow combined, uh, impacting those populations. And that was also associated with large declines in sea ice. Over that sort of natural experiment starting around 2008, 2009, storms have decreased and associated with that have been declines in uh, the rain and snow precipitation per month. Um, and so it's sort of a combination of these press disturbances, like the melting of the sea ice versus these pulse weather disturbances that seems to be hitting the Adelie penguins uh, very hard, especially at Palmer Station.
And so where are we going? Well, we're trying to really get a handle on sort of to what degree these long-term press changes um, essentially are modified by these episodic pulses. And if we reach sort of different uh, tipping points within the system with a big focus on top predators. We're also looking at changes in prey quality rather than just abundance. Um, and we're beginning to model sort of the pulse and cyclical presses uh, for the base of the food web in the elemental cycling. And we're looking for synthesis projects, looking at cyclical presses across the marine sites, tropical, temperate, and polar. And that's just a great uh, extra thing. There was a paper in Nature suggesting that human harvesting of the whales, especially in the Southern Ocean, um, disrupted the iron cycle. Um, and there will be concern about food limitation in the future. But that was the extra four question slide.